Hey guys, John from JohnMurrayHeadshots.com here and we are in the studio with Joseph McGuire from Clearsight Communications. Joseph is Ireland's leading facial profiler and Joseph has a book because I remember stuff about brand and making sure that we get all this sort of stuff in there. Uh, Joseph's book is called Face and Facts and you can get it at ClearsightCommunications.com or on Kindle. On Kindle as well? Yep. Mine is signed. Your Kindle version won't be. Um, we decided today what we're going to do is actually tell you a bit of a story about how this started because I do faces, Joseph does faces and everybody who knows both of us was saying you need to meet that guy because he does faces and you do faces and it's like just the best thing ever. So we met and then realized that we both do faces completely different and it's in no way connected other than the fact that we have faces in common. Yep. Um, but I've been able to learn loads from him and, and vice versa. He's been nice. I just shot his headshots <laughs> and made him lovely. Um, so what we've decided to do, and we put out a video to say that we're going to profile some faces. I'm going to do it from the point of view of how you market yourself, how your brand is represented, how the image represents you. What we're going to do is I'm, we're going to look at them on the screen here, and then at the end, we're going to edit the video, and I'm going to put the images on the bottom of the screen so that you guys can see what we're talking about. Uh, Joseph's going to do it from his point of view, which is the Chinese art of Mian Chung face reading. So I'll be looking at personality, behavior style, communication patterns, and obviously we won't be mentioning any names. We will be looking at it, it no pun intended. It is a brief snapshot of faces, so we're just touching on a few features. If we see the same feature on several people, we won't be repeating them. We'll just be saying go back to the original or whatever, um, and hopefully you'll get a, a nice taste of what faces actually tell you. Yeah. Um, and from my point of view, like I say, I'm going to be talking about how we put ourselves out there and the information that other people take from that. Um, Joseph reads a lot deeper into the information that is contained within the face, whereas I'm looking at the stuff that you and I pick up on because we're not as clever as him. <laughs> um, we put them into a randomizer because we got loads and loads and loads of submissions. We're going to spend about 15 minutes doing it. Um, in total, so we're going to kick off. And the very first image we have is this guy here. You will see him on the bottom of the screen. Um, this is a LinkedIn profile picture. And what I see in the image is, first of all, like he has a nice calm smile on his face, which is, is good. Um, his lower eyelids are active, which means that it's a genuine smile, uh, which is nice. His shoulders are a little bit blocked because he's protecting himself just a little bit. But the big thing that I see in the image is that his eyes are shaded. So it just means that the light is coming from a weird angle and what it's doing, instead of the light lighting up his whole face like these are here, uh, where you can actually see our eyes and communicate with our eyes, what's happening is his eyes are just a little bit too shaded and the color is a bit off as well. He looks a little bit jaundiced, but that's more technology's fault than his fault. I'm assuming he's not actually that kind of gray and pale. Um, what do you see? Oh, there's always there's always more that's uh, that's absolutely spot on what you've said there there's a few obvious things here and i'll just touch on them very briefly you notice the whole right side of the face is much wider which yeah. tells you that there's a greater emphasis on his professional life whatever whatever he happens to be doing the high cheekbone on the right tells you he's naturally very energetic he's, he's high energy when he when he's engaged in any kind of project um and going back to the eyes themselves the eyes are not just not just not well lit but they're also slightly recessed and there's a, they're slightly dull, and the right eye is actually duller than the left in this instance. So it tells you that whatever's going on or has been going on in his professional life, he's kind of tired. Uh, so there's a lot more satisfaction in his personal life, whatever's going on for him. But there's a dichotomy there, and I would suggest he have a look at what's actually going on and see what he needs to change to freshen himself up and bring his strength through more because his eyes look subdued, and there is that there is a tiredness there that isn't really serving him. Everybody watching this video is going, oh Jesus Christ, did I send in a submission for this? Um, I'm sitting here going, I have a dry patch underneath my eye that came up the other day and I'm like, don't look at Joseph. Don't let him look at my face. Um, and I still haven't got my hair cut for all of you who've been following the videos. Uh, we're going to move on to the next video, or the next image. Okay, next image. Uh, this lady is, um, this is professionally shot. So it's been shot by a professional photographer. This is important. Um, when you're going to post anything onto LinkedIn or onto websites, it's important that these images are, are professionally shot. 
Um, I'm not just saying that because I'm a professional photographer. You could be anywhere in the world. I couldn't possibly photograph everybody who's going to watch this. Um, but connect in with a local photographer. If you want, let me know and I'll give you a recommendation of somebody in your area. Um, this image, her posture and a pose is just really uncomfortable for me. Uh, the first thing I see is that the top is just way too busy. It's she's a good looking woman she's a really good looking woman but it's just that she feels uncomfortable in the image the top is just way too busy it's distracting it's too big as well and um, it's not too big for her it's just too big in the image that she's kind of splayed out and it's almost like you know one of those squirrel monkeys or something like that you know and not to make insults or anything like that it's just that it's splayed out and what's filling all these gaps underneath and um, that don't need to be there the facial expression is a social smile. So it's a smile because she feels she is required to smile because it's a photograph. We all do it when we stand in front of the camera. We go into this habit loop of smiling. Um, because she's uncomfortable, she's holding her eyes open and she's raising one eyebrow up into the air. This is really weird. You wouldn't let it mind your kids. Don't do it in photographs, people. Um, don't mind me, that's not just you, this lady in the photograph. It's so many people do it. We all hold our eyes open for the camera because we don't want to blink when the flash goes off. Um, you know, it's just one thing we do. So don't worry too much about it. Um, I'd always recommend working with a photographer who will bring out your personality because it should be a genuine reactive smile rather than some something that's posed. Chandler smile or sister-in-law smile is what we call it, what's going on in this photograph. Yeah. As John said, there isn't the full Duchenne smile where you get the, the wrinkles and the eyes, the eyes narrowing there. So it is it is very posed. But taking taking that aside, this is a this is a very strong set of features, and there's a few obvious things there. Uh, and by the way, anybody who knows me knows I don't say nice things for the sake of it. I tell you what I see. Um, so we've got a good strong, good high vertical forehead there, which tells you that there's a natural aptitude for strategy, analysis, planning, and very good at working with logic, and particularly in a, in a structured context. Um, very strong nose, which means she's going to be very expressive when she's something to say, she's going to say it. And it's not going to be necessarily aggressive. I don't mean it in that way, but she's, she's somebody who naturally, uh, can naturally take charge of whatever she's doing. And one other obvious, there's, there's always, there's, unlike Colombo, there's always one more thing. But I'm just going to touch on one particular thing here, which is that you notice the mouth tilts slightly up to the right, which tells you with this lady that um, her if you like, her default setting is to sell. And I don't mean that in any um, uh, sort of mischievous way or that she's not looking to uh, manipulate anybody, but uh, she's, she likes to convince and she's naturally, she has a talent for being convincing and for persuasion. I like it. I like it. The yeah. almond shaped eyes help with that as well. Oh yeah, yeah, almond shaped eyes in, in, the, in the Chinese tradition would be associated with seduction and not necessarily in, in, in a sexual sense, but in the ability to draw people in and to have people believe in you and feel confident in you and to buy whatever it is you're selling. Just like Derek Conley. Absolutely. Um, I learned that almond shaped eye thing from him. Um, I'm a whole year following his work and swallowing all the information he gives me. He's intent outside my house. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we're on to the next image. I know this girl because I used to work with her years ago. Um, this is a beautiful smile and it's not just a beautiful smile because she's a pretty girl it's a beautiful smile because it's a proper full-on duchenne smile yep. she's in a giggly noisy laugh and i know the noise that she's making in that laugh and um, which helps me to connect with her not only that she's leaning forward towards the camera and um, which means that the mirror receptors in your brain and my brain are making me and you do the exact same thing so we engage with her because she's engaging with us she's leaning forward so we do the same thing um her head is slightly tilted to one side, ever so slightly, so she's opening up her personal space to say, I'm not threatened and you don't need to be threatened either. Um, the crop is a bit weird and it's cropped out of another image. So I'm always telling people, do not use images where it's a crop of another image for your LinkedIn profile picture or, or anything like that. You want an image that's head and shoulders. So it's kind of cropped from the middle of the chest up to the hairline. Uh, you don't need the back of your head in the image. You'll see that with any image that I've shared. Um, I tend to chop off the top of people's heads on purpose, just the very, very top. We don't need to know you've got the back of your head. Um, so we can see that Caroline, or this lady, we're not saying names. Um, sorry, Caroline. Everybody, this is Caroline. Um, yeah, you can see it's cropped from another image. I would crop it a bit tighter to 
just fill the image with her uh, rather than it being um, obvious that it's a cropped image. But I would generally advise to, again, have a professionally shot headshot that's shot dead, dedicated to your LinkedIn profile. But this is what your picture should look like. This it should show your personality, and that's everything that people want to see. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful smile here, and a number of again a number of particular features. The face shape is more oval, so when you see an oval face shape like that, this is somebody who's for whom harmony is really important. Harmony in their personal life, harmony in their professional life. When they go into a room, they'll automatically pick up on the atmosphere. They'll know instinctively within seconds who's happy, who's unhappy, who where the stress, who's who's agitated with with either themselves or with somebody else and they will look to create harmony wherever they happen to be um, <clears throat> you notice a lovely round chin and slightly prominent chin so this is a lady with very strong ideals her her ideals her values are really important to her it's important for her to share important for her to demonstrate to she will embody what she believes um, the, the, the slightly forward nature of a chin means she's also very determined and if you notice the two upper middle front teeth are slightly larger than the others which tells you that she can be quite stubborn so when she wants something she's really going to go for it but she will tend to do it with charm first unless she has to really push hard. Enough to keep you going? That's bang on over here. <laughs> that is and everybody who knows her will know that that's exactly Carolyn or the lady in the picture that we're not saying names. And the next image. So there's something suspicious about the lighting on this image and the tone and the color. Mm -hmm. It looks uh, familiar. Um, those of you who haven't guessed, I shot this image. Um, so let me see. I know there's a couple of images here. So this in, in this set of images that were shot, um, she is squeezing her lower eyelids. So she's showing confidence with the eyes and a little bit of approachability with the mouth as well. Um, there's a little bit of a smirk going on. Shows there's something going on inside here. A little bit of cheekiness. Uh, there is a little bit of nostril flaring going on that I didn't notice when I shot the headshot. Um, but other than that, it's then there's the one little bit of hair that kind of creeped down. Um, but there is other images from this set as well that are very similar. So I would suggest that we have another look at which one that you're using. <laughs> it's great though. You're amazing. Yeah, see the photographer. Over, and I did a great job here. Yeah, a couple of things. Um, there's some similarities in the face shape with the previous image, um, but there, I'll, add a, I'll add a couple of details here. Number one, the eyebrows. You notice the eyebrows are naturally curved, and I, yes, I do know women treat and structure their eyebrows, but we're looking at what's actually there. So do I. All right. <laughs> so what we're looking at is lovely curved eyebrows, and there's a nice thickness to them. So the curved nature of the eyebrows tells you that this is somebody who's very personable and for whom personal relation, the quality of relationships is really important. And again, this applies both in her personal life and her professional life. We notice also that there's a nice thickness and particularly with the right eye, the, the beginning of the, the, the right eyebrow is, is noticeably thicker. So when she's beginning, before she begins any given project, she planning is really important to her and being organized and being prepared. Um, she likes to have things together before she before she starts and that will apply whether she's working with for herself or whether she's working in a team if she's in charge of a team she'll want to make sure they're organized um, and if somebody she's well able to speak up she won't she's not somebody who will naturally push first um, if she has to speak up she will do it but she likes to get it done she likes to get things done peacefully but all, and then if she has to push she'll push but only as hard as she needs to because being, being really forceful and, and dogmatic is not her natural style. Significant. Okay. That was just a word I wanted to use. Doesn't mean anything, just significant. Here's another image that has suspicious lighting on it and that looks quite familiar. Um, so this image is, it's, Quite strong. It's a very strong image. Um, again, we see confidence with the flat lower eyelids, um, with the head position as well, where she's bringing her head forward and she's saying, "I'm paying attention to you, and I want you to pay attention to me. I want you to sit up and notice." Um, there's a little bit of a curvature of the corners of the mouth pointing towards the sky. That is called a smile, people. Um, there's a little bit of <clears throat> tension in the sternocleidomastoid muscles where she's forcing forward, and because she's in such good nick, um, she's in such good shape that you kind of really see these muscles uh, prominent when she's forcing her head forward. Um, 
it should be a little bit softer and i think there is other images where it's a little bit softer um but other than that i remember the second this image was taken so she's a really really cool woman and she's got a cool accent as well okay yeah, you obviously know this lady, um, and obviously, thankfully, you didn't mention any names here. You're, yeah, <laughs> you're her name is Lourdes. <laughs> We're not mentioning names. That's a code name, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, um, some similarities, and again, in features between uh, previous images, so I'll just touch on a couple of other things. We notice, again, just with the right eyebrow, the thickest part of it by far is at the beginning, and then it really thins out. And yes, I know it's been, I know it's been structured, but in this case, it tells you that, again, the planning bit is really important. But she can take her eye off the, uh, take her foot off the pedal, when things get when things get moving. So just to make sure for this lady that she pays attention to things as they're progressing, and particularly if she's in charge of any given project, if she's delegating, make sure she delegates well. She's very very clear about who she's delegating to and what she's delegating to them, and make sure she manages the quality as things progress. And one other obvious thing here is um, the lo the upper lip is much thinner than the lower lip. So um, although she loves the, the image is, is almost is very much intended to give uh, an, uh, uh, an impression of power and she, she can be quite powerful. Um, her strength is actually in being persuasive rather than pushing to, or pushing people too hard. The lower lip is much is naturally much fuller, which tells you that persuasion is much more her strength, although her, her tendency is actually to push. So, you can get a kind of a dichotomy in her behavior which will cause her internal stress and some of which is actually manifesting in this lower lip which tells you she holds stress in the colon area there you go free health check <laughs> there's a uh, emodium on the way uh don't worry about that now that's amazing that is is again it's it's uh, it's another spot on profile uh we are on to the next image okay so She's a really pretty girl. I'll start that off. Uh, she's a great face shape and she has almost a Sheila Shoiga thing going on. Yeah. yeah. Um in the shape of the face. Not anything to her because she's not from this jurisdiction. Okay, Sheila Shoiga is a television presenter in Ireland. Um just to throw that out there. You should google it. It's S I L E. I'll, I'll type it into the thing and I'll tell you. Um Yeah, you've a really really pretty face, but this image has a very cartoony feel. So it's been manipulated to look like a cartoon uh with the whole japanese thing going on as well so with the eyes the eye makeup and the little stick with the dangly thing there's a real geisha look off it um the image the facial expression is just a bit too strong so you're holding your eyes open in the image to look dead straight down the camera and give this sense that you're staring at the people or staring at the camera or, or being really really powerful um and the mouth shape as well so there's a little bit of a smirk going on but the eyes are way too big because you're holding them open and um, other than that for me as a professional headshot on linkedin unless you were japanese it doesn't really work um, and the fact that it's just overly retouched a little bit as well um but you've got a really pretty face you've got cool hair as well um so i would suggest just posting an image that's not retouched or that's only basically retouched, so taking out any transient marks or anything like that. Um, not something that's, that's being processed to the point that it looks like a cartoon. Okay, yeah, I'd agree with all of that actually. And just to say you're not doing you're not you're not really showing yourself to best advantage in this image, certainly if you're using it as a professional as a professional image. Um, because you're you're underselling you're underselling your strengths and your personality with this one. Uh, a couple of particular observations then you notice the right eyebrow is actually quite straight which tells you that in your particularly in your professional the left eye, eyebrow is almost straight but not quite as straight as the right one so it tells you that in your professional life you're you, you work very much on logic and you work very much on linear processes linear thinking so if you're communicating with somebody with a not as very straight eyebrow like that or a pair of very straight eyebrows you need to present things in a very logical linear fashion um, we notice the mouth is kind of rosebud shaped. So for this lady, sensuality is important. And I don't just mean that again in the physical sort of sexual sense, uh, aesthetics, aesthetics are really important. So if you're meeting somebody with, with that, that shaped mouth, make sure you meet them in a really nice environment where the, there's, there's, beauty in the, there's beauty in the environment because that will make them feel much more at ease and they're much more open to engaging and doing business with you. 
um, very strong features, uh, lovely strong chin, nice wide cheek here, um, strong, strong cheekbones, which unfortunately the photo has been retouched, so it's not showing them to best effect. Um, but this is uh, this lady is a this lady is a powerhouse. But please show your strengths more. There you go. There's another one. Um, if you're not looking in the mirror, questioning everything on your face right now, there's something wrong with you. Uh, because I know the first time I met him, I did. Um, after he profiled me as well in a room full of people. Um, this message came in, or this image is another one that came in. This is an Australian lady, and she sent me. Um, she got her hair done specifically for this image. And had her nephew shoot the image it's a really nice image and you can see instantly that there's a connection between her and the person in the photo that's taken the photograph and it's not with the camera she's not connected to the camera she's connected to the person behind the camera and we call that camera invisibility it means that there's a personal connection there and it's a human connection um the smile is genuine borderline forcing it up there a little bit but she's still connected with the person behind the camera uh, the head position is just a bit too high. Now it's very natural. A lot of people will stand in front of the camera and put their head up here and hold their eyes open because they don't want to blink and then go, that's uncomfortable. But when you are in a natural position like this, um, I like it. The jacket over the shoulder, again, it's, it's very editorial. Um, I'd like to see it cropped a little bit tighter. If it was going to be cropped a little tighter, we'd have to lose the jacket because the jacket will be just extra it doesn't need mm -hmm. to be on the plate you know like oh, they're yeah. saying master chef Absolutely. um master chef australia watch it it's really really good they're friendly um but yeah the jacket being on the shoulder it was cropped a little bit tighter would mean that it would just be just wrong and be weird because it'd be on one side of the image and not on the other uh, but the image is nice it is a really really nice image um the color toning is a bit strange on it it's a little bit yellow and there's a bit of an orangey hue off it um it may be just a conflict between the red top the green jacket and then the green of the trees humans have red tones in our faces because we have blood and um, so green and red tend to conflict against each other when you have photographs but it's a nice image um, and she looks like a nice lady yeah she does look like a very nice lady who's been through tough times the eyes tell me that in particular there's a lot of depth in those eyes and there's a lot of history in those eyes and ultimately whether you believe the eyes are the windows to the soul or not the eyes reveal so much about where you've been where you are and where you're likely to be going so this lady is in a better place now than she was certainly even five ten years ago and i have no idea who she is no idea of her history uh, but the eyes tell me a lot the right the, the right eye is slightly less bright than the left so it tells me that in her personal life she's happier than in her professional life whatever it is she may be doing or was doing more recently um, there's been a lot of there's been a lot of struggle there. Um, the there are lines coming down from the corners of the mouth down to the chin, which tell me that she's gone through a lot of disappointment. But the eyes tell me that she's actually has passed through it. She's not there now, but there's still there's still some residue there. So it's really a case of trusting more and more who you are, who you who you know yourself to be, and let go of the past because it's not it's done. Whatever's happened has happened. It's not still happening unless you choose it to be. Nice friendly round face. Absolutely, absolutely. Look, there's lovely warmth in the face, and the, the the eyes, the eyes. There's a there's a there's a desire to connect in the eyes that some people unfortunately don't show, but but it's very strong here. So uh, this is a lady you, yeah, you just you'd, you'd be happy to meet her. Yeah, nice. On to the next image. Um, I'm assuming this image was not is not used as a profile picture on LinkedIn. No, I can confirm that. Joseph knows that. Yeah. Um, so. It's not really an image for me to comment on, I suppose, okay. because it's not really one we're putting out there. It's just he's looking for a profile and off him. That's why he sent him the message <laughs> and not me. This is it. This is a left out. <laughs> it's okay. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll call the Samaritans for you later, John. I'll put my glasses on and just fall asleep here for five minutes. Yeah. Blues Brothers, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is actually a good friend of mine. Um, so I know, I know him well. I know his life. I know his personality. But I'll just make a couple of general general observations here um, you notice a very thick eyebrows here uh, this is a, this is a guy for whom learning and absorbing information is really important so again if you see thick eyebrows like that it tells you when you're communicating with somebody like that they they love to have all the information so give make sure that your information make sure you're clear in presenting the information but let them have as much as they want because if they if you just give it to them in really tiny pieces it won't satisfy them and it won't really engage their curiosity 
So that's the first thing. Um, you notice the nose really fills out, the no nose really widens out as it comes towards the, the, the tip. And when you see that with somebody, this is once they get going, they really go full steam ahead. So they really build up momentum as soon as a project, as soon as any kind of undertaking happens. Once their enthusiasm is there, they, their energy just builds and builds as builds as they go through it. Um, and we also see a very a, a lovely sizable chin. They're very determined and he's also got the oval shape. So naturally diplomatic, naturally into harmony, but very determined and very powerful energy here. Cool. Okay, we're going to jump into the next image really quickly. Um, I'm not sure if this is an image that's being used as a LinkedIn profile picture or not. Um, she's a really pretty face and she has those rosebud lips again yep. but that's his thing I'm not going to talk <laughs> about rosebud lips because that's his thing I'm not going to steal his thunder um, what I see is again the lower eyelids are squeezed and she's a bit of a smile on her face as well so there's a little bit of a, a kind of a cheeky smile going on there this is a selfie this is un unquestionably a selfie so if this is a profile picture on LinkedIn you shouldn't really be doing it if you invest in a professional image it's like going to a car garage and like you're going to go to a car garage that is established it has nice branding outside of it it looks like a place that is going to be there in six months time if something goes wrong with the car you don't want to go somewhere that the kids have painted the picture or the, the poster on the outside of it and they're selling cars out of their driveway because like, god knows what's going to happen like if anything happens with the car they might not be there so if you show that you're invested in yourself it means that other people will trust the fact that you're going to be around to deal with further down the line. That helps with health as well. Uh, she's nice sparkly eyes. Uh, babies always have really sparkly eyes as well. So you look at a baby, baby do, babies don't have any health problems. So we want to see reflections in people's eyes to show health. Uh, the viscosity of the human eye is directly linked to the, the, the health of the person. So older people will have quite dull eyes. People who are sick have quite dull eyes. Um, she's quite sparkly eyes and it, it does show that she's quite healthy. She's got quite thick, thick limbal rings as well. The, the dark rings on the outside of the iris, the colored part of your eye. Uh, thicker limbal rings show uh, quite health and vitality as well. Did I get that off you? Possibly. I'm not sure. I don't even know where I get this information <laughs> from, but I know it. It's stuff that's in my head. Yeah. Um, she looks nice. Hair is great as well. I would just recommend the image being professionally shot rather than a selfie. Okay, excellent, excellent. Yeah, the, the, the eyes bit is something I absolutely concur with 100% with what John said there. And I'll just add a little bit to do, not so much with the eyes, but the upper eyelid. You notice that there's quite a thick upper eyelid fold there. So when you see that, it means that this person has, a, has an ego. And I don't mean that in a negative sense, um, but when you're dealing with somebody with, with quite a thick upper eyelid fold, it's important that you acknowledge them, you accredit them, you pay attention to them, because if you don't, you'll lose their attention very quickly. Um, you do need, they, they do respond well to praise. And that's just a, that's just a fact of life. Um, it can be taken as a negative, but I don't mean it that way. Uh, we notice then, we can look at the face from so many perspectives from this tradition, and we notice that the upper third of the face, which is the whole forehead area, um, is much larger in, in, in area than the, the lower third, which is the tip of the nose down to the chin. So that tells you that your primary strength is in the mind, working with the mind. That's whether it's, what are you talking about? Just thinking in general, men, your mental strength is, 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 your, is, your, is your strength. Um, but if you're, so you need, to, you need to use that to best advantage. You need to make sure you're planning and you're thinking before any kind of, any kind of engagement, or certainly any kind of negotiation is really thorough because if the negotiation is drawn out, your energy is likely to flag. Your, your physical resources constitutionally are not as strong as your mental resources. So you need to get things done, ideally, clearly, and within a, within a certain, manage the time frame. because if things just get, just go on and on and on, you're likely to feel tired and less engaged and you're gonna lose some of the mental clarity. So that's that's a really important thing here in, in, in terms of just this this face shape. Cool. So much for 15 minutes, people. Uh, we're already like half an hour in and we're still talking about faces. Okay, we're just gonna continue on because why wouldn't we? Okay, this lady sent in two images and I'm gonna side by side them. Again, I'm assuming they're for Joseph because I don't think they're used as LinkedIn profile pictures. Um, 
one thing I see in the image is that you're holding your mouth, you're holding your face. We all have something that we're uncomfortable with when we look at photographs, right? So this is the way it works. When you see yourself in the mirror, you think you look like that, but you don't. You're the only person in the whole world sees that image. So when you see a photograph of yourself, it's the wrong way around and your brain says, what's wrong with that? So you go to one thing on your face you don't like and it's always gonna be the same thing in every single photograph and you hang on to it because it makes you feel uncomfortable. But really it's usually the facial expression that makes us feel uncomfortable because the person in the photograph is uncomfortable. So I'm assuming your thing is your teeth um, or your smile or how you smile. So you're holding on to that smile, you're holding it back. Um, Honestly, you're the only person in the whole world who's going to see it other than me because it's my job to point out these things and to see these things and his. Um, <laughs> don't mind him. I'm nicer. Um, yeah, so like, it's okay. You're the only person in the world who sees it. Like, I was so uncomfortable with my smile for so long in my life. Um, and it was only afterwards, it's only now looking back, I was thinking, what was I, what was wrong with me? Like, you know, it was absolutely nothing wrong with me the whole time. Um, it's just something that I saw. Um, nobody sees any of your little flaws I talk about this a lot in my talks so it's just a thing um, so I'm assuming these are just for Joseph because okay yeah um, if they are for LinkedIn by the way just a little bit better grooming but and not a selfie professional shots okay okay yeah the reality is as John said most of us are so absorbed with ourselves that we're not really paying attention to what's going on in the world around us never mind other people's faces unless they're unless they particularly impact on us for whatever reason and we really have to deal with them. So it is really a case of just as far as we can, just relax and allow allow ourselves to smile, allow ourselves to just shine whatever way. Um, having said that, uh, in the tradition I work with, we refer to face shapes and we work with eight in particular. And your face shape is almost like a an inverted, it's kind of a combination of oval and inverted triangle. So the harmony bit, as I spoke about earlier, is very important to you. But the inverted triangle bit is also really important, um, which tells you that your your great strength is in being creative and coming up with ideas that are maybe outside the box, sort of left field things. So I don't know what you do, um, but whatever whatever you're doing, make sure you have a creative outlet for your for your talents. And whatever that whatever creative means for you, it's not for me to tell you you should be doing painting or pottery or whatever it happens to be, but whatever you're drawn to, make sure you're allowing yourself some way to on a very regular basis to express your creativity because it's a natural part of your strength. If you do that, it'll enhance all the other areas of your life because it's an area that demands expression. Cool. Okay, we're on to the next image. This is professionally shot. Um it was shot with good decent enough lighting and it was also shot with oh a nice little kicker backlight on the dark background uh to light it up for me the posture's too guarded so she's completely turned side on and she's like way 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 out there and she's trying to show her smile now for me again obviously my preferences are my preferences and different professional photographers here like this and it's kind of turned off to the side so she's up here like this and we're losing the side of her face um, and it's given us an additional line underneath the jaw where it looks soft. That's not the shape of her face. Um, she should be kind of kicking her head off to the side so we can actually see her jawbone. Um, she looks a little bit suspicious in the image because it's a social smile rather than a genuine reactive smile. So she's smiling because she feels she needs to. Um, and as she's standing side on as well, what's happening is because there's no straight lines in nature. Um, so when you look at her shoulder, so the gap between her, you can't see me pointing at the screen. Uh, the gap between her shoulder and the back of her head is quite significant as you go across and then it comes back up again. So it's almost over here like this. It's a huge big gap. Um, we don't need that to happen. So what you can do, um, the girl in the photograph or the person who shot it or any other photographers that are out there, what you can do is you can get the client to lean back slightly. Um, and when they bring the head out and around, it shortens that gap between the shoulder and the jaw. Um, to make sure that they're more engaged and bring their head, swing it right back around towards that shoulder. And it means that they're in a much better, stronger position. They're holding much better confidence in their shoulders and much uh, better posture. And it reads so much better. Um, again, work with somebody who's gonna make you laugh and make you smile properly rather than tell you to smile because smiles generate these social smiles. Yeah, excellent. Okay, I know this lady. I know her to be a very, very impressive individual. And again, I don't say that for the sake of it. Uh, she's, she's certainly demonstrated that to me. Um, unfortunately, for our purposes here, we're not seeing the face full on. 
Um, but there are a number of things I'll point out. One I haven't referred to earlier is we noticed that her, we can see her left ear, um, left ear, and we noticed that there's a lovely, well-developed earlobe there. And when you see that, it tells you that this is somebody who has naturally very strong intuition. So that's something that's something to make sure you're using and using well. <laughs> we'll get John a nice pair of heavy earrings. To pull him down. <laughs> uh, we notice here there's a the the face there's a there's a lovely tidiness to the face which epitomizes what this lady is about because she is she is super organized in in, in her life and what she does how she presents herself, and we notice the eyebrows here the eyebrows are particularly tidy. They're very, very carefully sculpted. And this is this is this epitomizes who she is and how she approaches life because being organized and being thorough is really important. So when you see when you see a face and particularly eyebrows that are as tidy as that, and with the clarity that the eyes are showing, there's a lovely bright brightness in the eyes, but the eyes, the eyes really look at you and the eyes, the eyes are she is very observant. We notice the left eye is in this case, it's slightly narrowed, which is kind of a natural occurrence with the, the angle. But when you see somebody with the where the eyes are narrowed, and it's not a cause, not a uh, not a consequence of any kind of visual impairment, you notice that they, they you know that they're scrutinising you. And this lady is very good at evaluating, um, assessing other people, assessing situations. So narrowed eyes, and particularly then if the eyebrows are as tidy as that, this is somebody who's very organised, very good at assessing whatever's going on around them. Super. Okay, we're going to continue on. Um, when I got this image first, when Joseph sent it to me because it came into his inbox, I actually thought this was an Instagram filter um, because of the way the green plant on one side of the, the, the pattern wrapped around the side of his head. Um, again, I'm led to believe this is not a profile picture for LinkedIn. So this is sent in again, just for him to profile because I'm redundant <laughs> in, at this stage. Um, expression wise, it's just uncomfortable because you're holding your eyes open um, and staring straight down the, the lens. It's again, to give away that androgynous face, I suppose, just to make things a little bit more difficult on him. Um, so we read the shape of the eyebrows, the lower eyelids and the corners of the mouth and how they interact with each other. So if this was a LinkedIn profile picture, I know you have a suit and tie on with yeah. the profile picture. Um, so this is not that image. Um, so it's just a very strong look. If you were an actor, we'd be getting you to do this in the studio. Um, but it's more applying for Fair City is he Irish? He is Irish. <laughs> he is Irish. Um, Irish. Um, yeah. You know what Fair yeah, City is, well, it's, or it's, home and away. He lives, or he lives in the, the northern part of the island. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the northern part of the island. Yeah. But it's, um, I think it's yeah. all about you. Yeah, as I, as I, as I messaged, when he, when he sent me the photo, I, I messaged and asked, was he uh, impersonating Bill Murray here? Because it's a kind of Bill Murray lookalike uh, gig here. Um, but there's a number of things I know, I know about this gentleman anyway. Um, but rather than going into his personality, I'll just talk about some of the features and what they indicate. We notice that the, the bridge of the nose is kind of narrowed and if we saw him at an angle, we could see it slightly dipped. So for him, for or when you see somebody with that feature, um, meetings need to be short. They need to be clearly defined in terms of a time scale, in terms of an agenda, and in terms of accountability. If you're meeting somebody with a nose like that, keep it focused, don't waste the time because you'll lose their interest very quickly. Um, the nose is also relatively short in terms of the overall, the overall face. So this, there's a tendency to work too much in the business or in the in the in the job rather than on it. So uh, too much in the nuts and bolts and not enough on the vision, the bigger vision. So that's one one area to pay particular attention to. the The eyes are the eyes are big and open in this in this image. So we will just use that example. When the eyes are big and open like that, this is somebody for whom the heart really connects. So the personal connection and the emotional connection is really important. Even in a business context, if you meet somebody with eyes big like that, you need to connect with them personally first before you get down to business. And you need to show that you're taking them seriously. You need to show that you value their opinion. Even if you don't actually value it, at least communicate to them that you do. Fraud with Joseph McGuire. <laughs> well, <laughs> tactics and strategies. Um, okay, uh, we're gonna move on. Okay, so this image is cropped for a profile picture because it's in that round circle that we get on LinkedIn and profile and on Twitter and stuff like that. Um, 
I'm not sure what this lady does, but one thing I, I've had fashion designers in here loads. I've had um, jewelry designers and they come in and say, I want to be photographed with this particular piece of jewelry. That's seasonal and you're going to have to come back in in six months time for autumn, winter. And then you're going to have to come back in again for spring, summer to change what you're wearing in the image because it's out of fashion, out of date. It's like the iPhone, you know, every 20 minutes there's a new one. Um, so having something seasonal in your image is great if it's Christmas, but you know, it's not Christmas the whole time. Um, my wife would love the fact that it would be Christmas all year <laughs> round because she's- a Every day bit, with you is Christmas she's day, John. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Um, but so in the image, we want to see good, tall, confident posture because people want to com communicate with that. They want to understand that you are good at what you do or you're competent and confident in what you do. Um, the smile is, it's a pretty good smile. Um, it's a little bit held, a little bit restricted, but it's not a bad image. I would say just posture up, lose the Christmas cake, um, send some this way. We're at 46 <laughs> St. William Street, Dublin, just around the corner from Grafton Street. Um, but if you bake, then that's fine. But you can get that across in your profile message in saying what you do. And then your kind of resume that you have on LinkedIn or on Twitter or wherever else. So you can have that information there. You don't have to physically portray it in an image. Um, nice snowman, by the way. But yeah, no, really cool. Uh, really nice lady, but just I'd recommend just better posture. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure this isn't actually a profile pic. Um, and unfortunately, we can't see the whole face here this with the, the hair. Um, and that's just me being jealous, I guess. Uh, there's a whole third. You're just space. taller than your hair. <laughs> exactly, exactly. When I immigrated, so did my hair. We just landed in different locations. <laughs> uh, so unfortunately, we can't. With this, there's a whole, pretty much a whole third of the face not being, not being shown here. So I can just refer to a couple of things because again, the face is only a, a small part of the image. So a couple of things. Number one, lovely wide cheekbone on the right, which again, so when you're, particularly in your professional life, high energy. So you're a natural team player uh, also. So again, the, the whole thing of uh, having, you'd be naturally, con yeah, so you'd, you'd be naturally very conscientious as a thing going on at the bridge of the nose there. Um, so you'd be naturally conscientious, you'd have high energy. So it's important that you work with people who have high standards and who, who, who like to get on with things and get things done to a high standard. Because if that's not the case, that's gonna be quite depressing and even energy sapping for you. and you notice the chin is also there's a kind of a kind of rounded and kind of slightly rounded slightly pointed um, but more or more rounded really uh, so again again ideals are important but you're also quite driven to succeed so again making sure you're working with people who have that desire to move things forward rather than just keep plodding along in the same old way very important cool and um, we're going to jump on to the next one cool okay so this image is a, an Australian lady. Yep. I'm led to believe. Um, so again, the crop is important. When you see these images on LinkedIn, they're gonna be really, really, really small. So they're like a centimeter in height on your screen, on your computer screen, or even on your phone. So they're only very, very small. So what we wanna do is communicate as quickly as possible with the shoulders, um, position of the head and the facial expression. So. For me, the colors in this image is just way too much. Um, it's like a kid's TV presenter with many, many different colors going on and big, bold colors as well. When clients come in here, one of the big things I tell them is no fluorescent colors or no, don't wear anything that's gonna conflict with or almost take over your facial expression because what we wanna do is communicate with the face. We don't wanna communicate with the clothes. So the red with the blue and then the hair color as well. Now it was professionally shot, nice cinematic kind of blurred out background. Um, doesn't look to be retouched in, so it's an actual um, cinematic shot. The hair being pulled forward over both shoulders is something that I only very rarely do. It's something I try to avoid because we want to frame your face, but at the same time, we want to make sure that it frames it properly. So the hair coming down and being splayed out means that it's dragging the attention a little bit away from the face. Um, Smile is nice, got a cool dimple on the right side of the face yeah, there as well. Comment on that um, she's got a, a nice big smile. Um, look like a lovely lady. I would just say, 
mute the colors a little bit for your next headshot and make sure that it's cropped here and up to about here so that when you do post it into LinkedIn, it's not like a long image of you um, and your clothes with just the face as a secondary uh, thing there, but a cool smile and good posture as well. Yeah, neither of us know this lady and I'm pretty sure this isn't actually the LinkedIn profile pic. Um, I think this is one. I'm of really several. bad at this because I'm just taking it <laughs> as everybody's LinkedIn profile picture. He's like, no, it's not it at all. Um, I think I think that this lady sent in a number of photos, um, and we just we just went with this one. Um, and again, we can't see a whole there's a whole third of the face missing here, so this this part of the face just can't comment on. Uh, but in terms of what's there, John mentioned this lovely dimple. Uh, when you see that with a dimple, uh, dimple like that, whether it's one side or both sides. The, what the Chinese say about this is it's somebody who's naturally favoured by life. Now, I don't do fortune telling. I just don't go near any of that stuff. But when you see a lovely dimple like that, it's somebody who's naturally favoured by life. So things just tend to happen in a positive way for them. But the Chinese perspective is also that everything contains the seeds of its opposite. So when you have that, it, the flip side of it is that in any kind of relationship breakdown or relationship stress, you're absolutely heartbroken. You're not just upset, you're absolutely heartbroken. Like it's like it's like a massive life trauma. So this it's life kind of keeping things in balance, making sure you don't get too too cocky. Um, the low so we're looking at the lower the lower two thirds of the face here. The eyes are lovely and bright um, and there's a nice there's a nice smile there but and there's also a lovely there's a lovely chin um, and nice, nice fullness to the cheeks. So you're, it tells you, tells us that you're comfortable in, you're comfortable in a situation of power. And whether that's, whether that's power of your own material comfort, etc., or whether it's just being around people who have it, um, it's, it's kind of all the same. You're, you're very comfortable moving, moving in pretty much any circle. So when you see that natural fullness like that, and there's the warmth in the eyes, it tells you that this is somebody who's naturally very sociable, loves to get on with people, and can engage with people from all walks and all backgrounds. Very Cindy Lauper look as well. Yeah, absolutely. I can't yeah. remember who Cindy Lauper was. Remember that song, Girls Wanna Have Fun? All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, the song I, that was I, in the Goonies. Okay, didn't see it either. <laughs> I need better friends. He's never yeah, seen the Goonies. Absolutely. Okay, so we're going to jump on to the next image. Um, okay, so this is the color tone in this image is lovely and lovely cheekbones. Um, so this is a bit of a posed smile, and the head position as well as posed. Uh, you are left sided, not right sided, so you shouldn't be bringing your head to the opposite direction. So the side of your face that's nearer your shoulder with the earring, um, that's the side of your face that you unconsciously favor. And that's why you part your hair that way. So you don't naturally bring your head into that position, but you're trying to show off your fun side by throwing your head over um, and exposing that side of your face. The smile is a little bit restricted and held back. You're smiling because, again, you think you need to, um, but the eyes are quite active, which is really, really cool. Um, let me see. What else do I see? Um, the top wouldn't be something I'd bring into the studio for shooting headshots because it's quite busy. There's a lot of the little beads and stuff like that going on. Um, again, it would just conflict with you. And a lot of people do this when they're having their photographs taken is they tend to lean this way when they're this side onto the camera. So what happens is we lose all this shape of the face. So we can't see your jawbone. Uh, we want to stick your head out this way to show your actual jaw. Um, and if you cocked your head the opposite direction in this image, that would happen. And you'll be exposing and showing off the better side of your well, the better side of your face. We won't say that. Um, the side of your face that you favour. So it will be your left side. Um, pretty girl though, really pretty. Yeah. Uh, again, I don't know this lady personally, but I know who she is, and I know she's a she's a friend of a great friend of mine. I know something about the background, so I know I know she's come through major major life challenges and is really in a place of thriving now. So it's just wonderful to see that. Uh, just a simple body language thing actually just to refer to and John referred to the head tilt if you're talking to somebody and you want to demonstrate to them that that you're actually listening and paying attention just tilt your head slightly to the side it just gives that conscious mess if you're what well, partly what you're doing is you're exposing your neck you're showing your vulnerability it's almost like you're you're allowing themselves them to cut you if, if, yeah. if they so chose but it's showing your vulnerability and it's showing that you're open and receptive to them so you're giving their their whole body and the whole their whole their whole being a message of of openness and receptivity so that's one simple lesson to take from a photo like that um, in terms of the face itself um again lovely lovely bone structure again unfortunately you can't see all the face 
but a lovely bone structure, lovely balance between the three zones. The, again, the, the top forehead zone, middle zone from the eyebrows to the, the tip of the nose and then to the chin. They're all relatively, relatively equal. So um, in simple, or simplistic terms, I would refer to the top as thinking, the middle as feeling and the, the third is doing. So there's a lovely natural combination uh, of flow between those three areas of strength here. Um, so she can flow well between between them. The mind, the upper one would be the would probably be the, the, the primary one and then 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 feeling and then doing. So acting in, in that order, thinking first, then bringing the feelings into it and then bringing the action. If you do that in the, that order, that's the natural way to use your natural order to use your strengths to, to, to make sure you're presenting yourself and succeeding to best effect. A penny just dropped to the face shape now and I was thinking of something as you were saying that. So I was thinking of um, of a face that I saw and they would do it in a different angle or they'd do it in a different order and okay. it, it would be unnatural. Yeah. Um, and the person that I was thinking of has uh, learning difficulties. So it would make sense that, yeah, that, see, learning is fun, people. It's happening for me and I do faces all day long, every single day. And I've been hanging around with him for like two years. Um, okay, so... This lady sent in an image. It's not the image that she's using as a profile picture. Um, and I do know that because she sent it to me on Twitter. We're connected on Twitter and on LinkedIn. Um, again, really pretty face. She has, yeah, like as, as a selfie, again, it wouldn't be something that I suggest to use. Um, I don't have to hand her profile picture from Twitter or LinkedIn. Um, while we're in the middle of this. So I'm just going to hand it over to Joseph. Okay, one uh, particular thing here that's new that we haven't seen in any of the other photos. And again, I'm conscious this is a snapshot. This is not necessarily how this lady would be in normal life, but I'm just going to use her as an example here and I hope she doesn't mind. Um, we noticed that the, the left, the right eyebrow rather is, is, is higher than the left. And I, yes, I presume she has arched it for the photo. But if you see somebody where the eyebrows are actually at different heights. This is this represents almost like they're two different personalities. Yeah. You'll see it most obviously, the, 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 famous, the most famous example I can think of is the former Italian Premier Silvio Berlusconi, um, who's almost like split personality in terms of his private life, in terms of his public life. Um, I'm both not very public now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not suggesting this lady is in any way like that, but just I'm just using her as a as a as an example. Yeah, you can see there's a bit of a smirk yeah. and a pull to the yeah, yeah. to her left yeah. um in the image. So what that's doing is it's squeezing on the left eye, making the left eye a little bit smaller and she's raising that right eye just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a posed image rather than her just taking a photograph of herself. Um and I think that's what's causing the, the different the difference there. Um because you can see the left lower eyelid is, is oh, flat and yeah. yeah. um, where the right lower eyelid is, is curved. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna jump onto the next image. This is professionally shot. Um, this is a nice image. This is, he's sitting down. How do I know he's sitting down? Because I do this all day long and this is what I do. So I can see that he's sitting down because his posture is hanging. So his far shoulder, which is the one on the shaded side is leaning away from the camera. Um, this means I'm trying to get away and it's a little bit uncomfortable and I can also see that his posture is hanging forward as well So his head is kind of hanging off his shoulders. That's happening because he's sitting down uh, The line of the jacket's also giving it away It's like the, the weight shift is all to one side of him Which means that his left foot which is on the, the bright side of him is up on the stool And the right foot is down on the floor and that's what's making him have that posture and um, the light's pretty good. He's actually right-sided, so I would have lit him on the right side rather than the left side. The tie, the knot on the tie is just way too busy. It's the wrong way around. So a lot of people wear it like this because it's cool and it kind of shows off. You can tie a tie in fancy ways. Um, less is more. It's the same as that fluorescent colors and the big heavy patterns and stuff like that where you're, when you're wearing clothes um, in your headshots. You don't want it to conflict and compete with your look um, or your expression. So flip the double Windsor around. And double Windsor is always in headshots when you're wearing a toy, not this single Windsor because it's all one-sided and it's very uneven. Um, the smile is a bit of a social smile. Um, he has a good look, actually. 
I'd like to see a bit more of his face shape, and I would have lit him on the opposite or the opposite side. Um, but as a critique, I think it's just the ties of busy and then the posture. So make sure you're standing nice and tall and strong. Um, I get the head out a little bit more. It's better jawline than this. Yeah, like this. It's cool. It's easy. Go on. Right. Okay. <clears throat> the baldness gives an impression of roundness up here, but. If we were to assume that he had hair at one stage, we would see that the face shape is actually more rectangular, which we typically associate with leadership. We, it's an archetypal leadership face. We assume when people have a more rectangular face shape that they have leadership qualities, whether they actually do or not. So meeting this, this chap, we would assume he would present with a reasonable degree of confidence and we would automatically or instinctively assume he is in charge of something or should be in charge of something. Uh, I have no idea who he is, nothing, I know nothing about his background, but that's the impression one would get first off. We ob he's obviously wearing glasses, um, so we presume there is a need for them, but we notice that the eyes are particularly narrowed anyway, and the upper lip is very thin, and I know the upper lip will be stretched in a smile, but the upper lip is particularly thin. So what we can say, and oh sorry, one other feature here is that the eyebrows are fairly straight. So what we can say with this gentleman, and if we see somebody with similar features, is that head rules heart, particularly in a professional context. So if you're dealing with this person, it's not about being all pally and going, as soon as you meet them, you give them a hug. It's, that's not what happens. Uh, and if, it, if, it, if, you, if it's what, if you're, what you're inclined to do, it's a mistake. Uh, so you meet the person, you get down to business, you allow things to flow in terms of the detail, the purpose of the meeting, and if if they open up, you go with that, but you don't push it. Cool. Um, good image. Really well dressed. I like it. Just for photographs, get that tie around. On to the next image. Again, another selfie. Um, I'm assuming it's not a profile picture. If it is a profile picture, like one of the things with selfies is people tend to stick the camera all the way up here because you want to get a jawline. Don't do that anymore. Okay, it's cool because it does show the background, which is wardrobes, but if you're gonna shoot selfies when you're out and about and you're on your holidays, um, I did write an article for a newspaper on selfies when it was World Selfie Day. The camera should be a little bit high because it gives us a jawline. Stick your head out a little bit and it will strengthen the jawline, um, but make sure that we can actually see the background because that's what you're trying to show off in your selfie. Um, if this is a profile image, don't use it as a profile image um, because it just shows that you just shot a selfie. Go and speak to somebody about having headshots done. If you're looking for recommendations, again, send me a message below and we will um, I'll recommend somebody in your area. Don't forget, Joseph Book. I'm just getting <laughs> that in there again, considering I saw it. Um, yeah, she's a pretty face and she's a really big smile as well. So, personable. Absolutely. Um, and a talker, I learned that off him. Uh, mm -hmm. People with white, white mouths like to talk. Um, and she's a really cool eye shape as well. So really, really cool eye shape means people are going to engage with you in a, in a professional image um, a lot more than in a selfie. So I'm assuming, again, this is just for Joseph's attention and not mine because I'm just sitting here with my way too long hair and he has no hair. So I'm making up for the with the extra hair uh, before I go to the barbers today. John, John will share with me later. Yeah, he's getting a new beard. This is a new LinkedIn connection and we've already had a little bit of banter on LinkedIn, so obviously a very personable lady. So not only would she be naturally talkative, but she's just naturally expressive. You can see that in you can see that in the smile, you can see that in the mouth, a very generous smile, and that would be a natural expression of who she is. Um, John has largely done my job here, but there's one other particular thing I want to point out, which we haven't seen in any of the other images. We notice that the hairline comes in on the side here, the, 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 just above the temple, the side of the forehead area. So when you see that coming in and you're sort of encroaching on the forehead, this is somebody with a very, very deeply built in work ethic. So if you want something done, give it to this lady because she, her natural aptitude is to just go and do. Her challenge is to actually stop doing and to switch off. So if you see somebody with that hairline that coming in on the forehead area, the further it comes in, the harder it is for them to switch off and not do. And it's one of the big, big life lessons. And their, their tendency is always to have a to-do list. And even if that to-do list is finished, there'll be another one building. Like Italians in the Italian job and all that <laughs> sort of thing. You have the, the hairline thing going on. Really cool. Okay, we're gonna jump onto the next image. Um, so, 
The first thing I see here is, again, this guarded posture where the head is back. So never mind the arms being folded, it's the head being back. Uh, the background is very distracting for me. It looks like it's a poster on the wall and it's shot against that. And whoever took the image has retouched it. Um, it's not the best of retouches. And that's not a critique or uh, it's not me being mean or facetious. It's, it's just uncomfortable. So what I see in this image is because of the background is so distracting, the horizon line on the water goes straight through where his mouth is. Um, so it continues on through his mouth and then up the far side of his head. His hair is that really, really cool um, grey, like kind of platinum hair. But against the background, it kind of fades off over his temples. And then there's not a massive difference between the background and, and the colour of his hair. And the head is just way too high. The smile is a social smile. So he's like smiling because I need to. Um, and then... Yeah, the background is just way too distracting. And then there's this soft filter across the image as well. Um, like the, like a surface blur or something or a Gaussian blur or something that's really not showing off his face. So men are cool. Men's faces are cool, especially with a bit of stubble and stuff like that. Get that head forward, get that jaw forward and let's see that shape, the face of your, the shape of your face um, rather than kind of pulling it back and restricting it. Um, it's very proud. I'd like to see a crop again from the middle of the chest up to the hairline. Um, I'd shoot him with a dark background as well because of the, the hair color. Um, I think it'd be really, really awesome. But um, yeah, there's not a huge amount I can say about this because the face is such a small part of the photo and the features aren't really that good. There's just a couple of things. I mean, the, the first thing actually, I'm still in shock at hearing that there's such a thing as World Selfie Day. I mean, that definitely does not need to be encouraged. <laughs> it's an appalling notion altogether. Unless you've lights like mine and you can shoot them like I do. Oh yeah, well, that's, a, that's a whole different story. But uh, come, in and, come in and pay this man lots of money. Do it properly. Double rates for everybody. <laughs> Just a couple of things. Um, obviously a lovely broad chin, wide mouth, so expressive, uh, very determined individual. But one thing I haven't touched on before is lovely, the, the, the forehead slopes back and curves back at the, at the top as well. So. When you see the forehead sloping back or angled back is probably more uh, more a polite way of describing it. When the forehead angles back like that, this is somebody who absorbs information quickly. So when you're talking to them, give them the information, let it flow. Don't just take it slowly and give it to them bit by bit because they oh, they just drive them demented. And when it when it curves back as nicely as this one does, this is a guy who gets a lot of his ideas purely from daydreaming and from imagination. It's almost like he's beaming beaming or tuning into the antennae are out there and he's drawing the information from from wherever but rather than rather than putting his head down and trying to focus opening his head up and drawing the information in works best for this guy cool look me um i have that same cadence and you said that before i have the same kind of it's a, it is a cadence rather than a, like a big curved bald uh, head because of, of the head angle as well it actually makes your forehead look a lot longer um, than it actually is so it's with that curvature as well so that with that that cadence um, and that bend backwards so absorbing information very very quickly and processing it and acting on it really really cool and he's very German look as well he has actually yeah yeah you lived in Germany I did yeah yeah my kids are half German so uh, well well versed in things German my wife grew up in Germany so there's loads of German stuff going on yeah um, awesome right we're going to jump on to the next image this is cool okay I like this Um. The stripes on the top are a bit distracting um, because they come down and bow all over the place like a Coca-Cola bottle. Um, so for me, the posture is she's just sitting on her left hip, so it's dropping that left shoulder. Um, head angle, head position is great, like Joseph said earlier. When you tip your head slightly to one side, you're saying, I'm not threatened and you don't need to be threatened either. You can come in and bite my neck or do whatever you need to do, but um, I'm saying that I trust you not to do that. and it's goes way 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 back your dog will do it puppies do it and uh, we all do it so they do it one way when they're confused and they go the opposite direction when they are are saying look i'm submissive to you or i'm i'm, I'm open to you um again professionally shot the background I, it's obviously shot for a brand it looks like can we say airbnb on the tv we're not on the telly we're not on the telly we can, we say can do what we, we want, want. Yeah, yeah. um yeah, it, it's shot professionally. It's shot for a brand. So the brand logo is in the background. For me, it's a bit distracting. 
Um, I don't mind the shot against the red. I don't mind the shot against the white. Uh, again, the crop should be up here. We don't need to see all down into the arms and stuff like that. Um, you know, I smile. It's raising the eyebrows just slightly because it's a little bit... I'm smiling because I have to. Um, but the smile is a genuine bow, has a genuine bow at the outside. And um, top lip, center of the top lip and the corners of the mouth are on different angles, which shows that it's a genuine smile, along with that Duchenne smile, uh, squeezing her lower eyelids in. The photographer knew what they were doing, and they lit you on the right side as well, which is important. But uh, yeah, it's a really, really pretty image, um, and your hair is great. The hair color is amazing. I'm jealous. Sends him his way. <laughs> He'll take what he can get. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it's yeah. freezing them. <laughs> Okay, a number of a uh, number of things. Lovely face shape. Well, again, this this lovely oval face shape. But there's a particular emphasis on the on the forehead area. So this is somebody this is somebody who thinks things through very very well. But the the actually the middle third of the face is the longest. So this is a lady who needs to be guided by her feeling. And I don't when I say feeling, I mean intuition as much as anything, or or sense, or and uh, um, I would describe it as body sense. When you walk into a room. When you meet people, your body will give you, your body will pick up on a vibration on what's going on, how to meet them, who they are, what, whether, whether it's positive, whether it's negative, all that stuff, attention there, because that's, that's, a, that's such a massive, massive strength for you. Um, her features are naturally expressive, lovely, lovely, well-developed nose. So this is a lady who's well able to speak up, well able to express herself. The eyes are kind of deep set. So even when she's engaging with somebody, even when she's actually talking and being very active, um, she'll be reflecting and she'll be observing and tuning into what's going on around her. So she, she's capable, women are regarded as being capable of multitasking. So in, that, in this particular way, she's very, very capable of, of being very engaged in the conversation, even a, even a really detailed, intricate conversation and picking up on a lot of nuances in the atmosphere and the energies around her. Cool. Um, I hope that helps. We are going to jump on to the next one and we're way over the hour, um, but we're going to keep going anyway because we've only got a couple more um, to do and we've gone this far, we might as well keep going. Um, okay, again, this is another image that's cropped from something else. It looks like you're at a wedding or something. Um, you get that by the shawl over your shoulder. Um, nice open smile. It's a genuine smile. It's actually a noisy giggle as well. So it's we like images like this because hmm. they're a person in full flow of themselves. Um, because of the light, it's Ireland. I'm assuming you're in Ireland because it's quite grey. Um, and I'm not just talking about the brickwork <laughs> behind. Um, the light tone is very grey. And because of the light angle as well, we can't see any reflections in your eyes. So we can't see um, anything to reflect health or anything like that. Um, nice big open smile. What else am I seeing? Um, it's a little bit blurred as well. If this is a profile image you're using, I'd advise against it because it's such a small image. Um, even here, we've had to, to blow it up a little bit just to see it. But yeah, you have a cool face. Uh, you have a big open smile and it's um, you look like good people. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a huge amount of real clarity of detail that I can pick up here, but there's a number of things. Again, I'd love to touch on a couple of things that are new. The lines at the corners of the eye, they're primarily level and, and upward. So when you see that, um, this is somebody who's by nature an optimist. So they will tend to see the positives in the situation. So again, when you're talking to them, emphasize the positive. If you're communicating with them in any context, personal or professional, emphasize the positive because that's naturally what they'll gravitate towards. The face shape is kind of rectangular, but even it's, it's almost like a slightly square element to it as well. And when somebody, it doesn't sound very unflattering for a woman, and it's, it's hard to put in any other terms, but there is a, there's a slightly square element to it. Um, but when you see that, um, it tells you that this is somebody for whom loyalty is really important. So that's not just that's not just being loyal; it's also receiving it. So they really value their relationships again, personal and professional, but especially personal. And being close to people and being close to people and that that element of trust is vitally important. Nice, cool. Your face is a mosaic of everybody who came before you. So. There's no right or wrong with faces. Oh, yeah. You know, seven point five billion people in the world, and every face is is completely different. Yeah. Even twins are different. In Thailand, they say same, same, but different. 
Oh yeah? yeah, yeah, it makes sense because you'll see that even with identical twins, you'll see you'll notice subtle differences, and then as they progress through life, their experiences, which be which would be slightly different, will reflect in little little nuances in the face, little little aspect changes to angles, changes to perspective, and they will really distinguish one personality from another. Evolving. When the toy people say same, same, but different, they're talking about counterfeit handbags, but it's all the same thing. <laughs> um, we're going to jump onto the next image, and I believe this is quite possibly the last image that we have um, that we've managed to pull into the randomizer. So um, this image here, look, it's posed trying to show off fun. Um, I'm sure you have an amazing personality, and look, we can see that without you having to funny poses and stuff like that the light is beautiful um you have a lovely skin tone as well like as like you've really really soft skin tone which is nice um the angle doesn't really do anything because it's just you're a bit lost in the image because of the angle of the the photograph it's like the camera is way too high uh, because you've dropped yourself down and you're kind of twisting the head around Again, like the image of the girl leaning against the wall with the blonde hair uh, and the earring, bring your head to the opposite side. So expose that other side of your face that's nearer to the camera and we can actually see the shape of your face and your jaw. Um, the jumper would be normally too busy for a headshot and stuff like that if we were to shoot it in here. And again, there's another soft glow put across the image as a filter. But... Um, yeah, I'd like to see another image where you're more direct and face on to the image uh, or onto the camera because it means that you're engaging again with the person who's looking at it. But you don't have to hide behind this kind of these strange angles and throwing your head off to one side to show nonchalance and fun and stuff like that. Like I shot a doctor in here a while back and he had a colorful bow tie on because he's a very serious doctor and has a very serious deep voice and he's very, very serious. Um, but he wanted to show off his fun side so as a crutch he hides behind these colourful dicky bow toys but he doesn't need that and I took the tie off him and his confidence felt crap but we managed to build him back up to show you can do it all with your facial expression and your posture it doesn't always have to be just about hiding behind something like a bow toy or um, colourful makeup or colourful glasses and your, your kind of shiny clothes and stuff like that um, we wear it on our faces rather than on our bodies Okay, um, a couple of things here. I'm just looking at the eyes especially because I'm particularly drawn to the eyes here and the eyes do not in this image, and again I'm conscious this is a, a snapshot in time, the eyes don't reflect any great warmth, which is kind of surprising if you're looking to present yourself in the best possible light. No pun intended here in, in the context of what John has been saying. And I'm also conscious that there's a very thick upper eyelid fold here which tells me that you do have a sizable ego. And again, that's not a judgment, that's an observation. Um, but to really present yourself in the best possible way, and which for any of us means really connecting with people, allow your natural warmth to come through because it's not really coming through here. And John talked about angles, this is not my, that's not my area, but I'm more concerned simply with the eyes themselves and the look in the eyes. It's a much more clinical look. Like you're you're evaluating and you're assessing rather than rather than shining and smiling, and I'm not quite sure why why you chose this image, but it's not it's not really an open image. Um, so have a look at that yourself. Have a look at other images. Have a look at yourself in the mirror and just practice the smile because that's really what will help you engage more with people. And I've no idea who you are, what you do. You may be immensely successful. I I can certainly see you in a leadership role in some context. Um, but just practice the smiling. I think again, it is like you said, and, and both things there, if you look at both of what I said and what Joseph said, you're hiding behind a pose and that pose is you restricting you coming out. So you're trying to hide behind the playfulness of a head move rather than actually showing your personality yeah. because you're using this angle as a crutch, the same as that doctor uses a bow toy. Um, and what that's doing is it's causing this kind of barrier between what people see of you and what you think they're, they're expected to see or it, it's it's like when somebody gets fillers or Botox and changes their face shape yeah. it's very difficult for us to understand and to mimic what we see in others to, to reciprocate what we see if we don't have the same shape um, or we don't have the ability to freeze our face in the same way 
But um, no, really, really interesting. Um, I think that's the last of the faces we're going to do this morning. Yeah. We should do this more often. It's Absolutely. really fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, We're only up to an hour and 15 minutes after saying we're going to do 15 <laughs> minutes. Um, if you have any questions or anything like that, we will most definitely answer them. We're not going to profile any more faces from comments or anything like that. Um, I know once a month I do this headshot review um, where I do something very similar to what I did today. Um, I think maybe we might do this once every couple of months. Yeah, sounds like, sounds like a good idea. And everything we've said today has been intended to be constructive. So hopefully yeah, yeah. it's been taken that way. Um, any feedback is welcome and uh, look forward to getting your responses. Cool. Don't forget, you can get Joseph's book, um, Face Facts, The Art of Reading Your Clients, Prospects for Sales, Negotiation and Recruitment, um, but also learning to read just other bits and pieces around the people that are in your lives um, because that information is, is valuable, very, very valuable. And Joseph has a cool headshot on the back of the book. Wonder who shot that. that. <laughs> um, you can get me on johnmurrayheadshots.com. You can get Joseph on clearsightcommunications.com. Yep. Um, and again, if you have any questions or comments, post them below. We're always going to be happy to, uh, to answer them. We're going to post this video onto YouTube. We're going to post it onto... Uh, it's going to be way, way, way too long for LinkedIn. But we will post the links onto uh, YouTube and stuff like that. And a snippet of the video onto the LinkedIn profiles, onto mine and onto his. And that's it. Um, it's going to be Tuesday when you see this. Well, it's going to be Tuesday when we post this. So you could be seeing it on any day. It's Tuesday somewhere. Absolutely. Or four o'clock somewhere. Tuesday somewhere. Um, <laughs> I think I have a problem. Um, yeah, so that's we're going to post this video. And if you have any questions or anything, let us know. And... Enjoy whatever day it is that you're watching the video. See Cheers. you later. Good work. That's fun. This is the bit of the news where they stand there and go, oh, yeah. <laughs> and show up some papers. Yeah, yeah. Have a